Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Championship Leadership Podcast. And today I'm excited we have Eddie Penny. He is the founder and CEO of the Contingent Group, also a former Navy SEAL and United States Marine. So I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Yeah, man. And uh, so I always love asking this question, starting off on the top. Championship leadership, what, what does that mean to you when you hear that phrase, championship leadership? Uh, it's... It's what you aspire to be, to have, to lead in all situations, no matter what it is, come into your family, your job, uh, whatever it is. And it's, it's hard to do sometimes. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's when you live with such a high standard, right, as a championship leader, whether it's a parent, obviously inside of your experiences uh, on the teams, of course, as, a, as the owner of a business, like the the eyes are always on you. You're always communicating always. the message, and like, yeah, I mean, there's 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 really no time to to take your foot off the gas when it comes to that example that we lead. So, um, talk to me a little bit about like just your path. Um, of course, you got the experience inside of the military, but yeah, what what has taken you to where you are currently today inside of your life? Uh, it, it wasn't uh, definitely was not uh, you know. A snap, and here I am. I'm a, yeah. I, mean, I would consider myself a, a a better leader. I mean, definitely a better leader than I was, you know, 20 years ago uh, when I joined the Marine Corps at 17. Uh, I was a child. I was a scared child. Uh, but you know, one thing that I did that I didn't even realize I was doing is I would take notes of good leaders, and I was like, wow, I really like how they treat people, and, and then also bad leaders that I would think were bad leaders or just bad individuals. I really wouldn't put them in a leadership category. Uh, it's like, I don't want to treat people like this. I would rather do this. And then through time and the years, you know, especially in the military, there's a lot of leaders, um, people that want to be leaders, people that act like leaders and people that just have it naturally and they just kind of make it happen. Uh, so just kind of picking and choosing what these guys had, these qualities and just kind of forming my own. Like, I like this. This works for me. It should work for other people. Um, and then just being able to change and it, so many things go into this, to this question, actually, now that yeah. I'm thinking about it, yeah. uh, just like all the attributes, you know, like integrity, loyalty, all the, all these things that go in there, being able to understand people, just having relationships, uh, with individuals. And that just helps you being able to like convey your message to those guys and girls, of what you're trying to accomplish and the vision of whatever it is. So that's pretty much been mine is I just like. Had a lot of experience with leaders, both on the combat field, off the combat field, in the boardroom, off the boardroom, uh, or out of the boardroom. So it, it, I just kind of got lucky from seeing many different avenues from where people, how they lead and what they do to accomplish the mission with a smile on their face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all right. What, um, we'll talk, talk maybe, it's, it's interesting to hear that you, you actually were like writing some of these things down. Was that just by design or just kind of like, didn't even, didn't even really realize it. I did it. I just kind of fell in love with it. I'm, I just, I felt like I was, I can do, I can do this. I can, I can do this. And just as I went up the, uh, the ladder in the military, I just kind of fell in love with it. And then, you know, my mentors, I'm like, I want to be like them. Uh, and they taught, taught me so much, you know, it wasn't like, I'm not going to, cause I think a great leader teaches the people under them and in doing so because they're not going to be there forever and people need to come up to keep the machine running. So uh, that was, that was huge. It just, I don't know. I, I yeah, couldn't no. tell you why. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, yeah, it, yeah. I appreciate it. What, um, well, what are some of the, uh, is there, is there, are there one or two that really stick, uh, come to mind that, you know, from your military time, whether it's on the teams or. or uh, yeah, just, yeah you know, the, there's, the there's definitely a couple and I can't, uh, I can't really give out names or anything. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, so there's definitely a couple. And one thing that's, I really learned from those individuals that they both had or a couple of them had was that because there wasn't one, there was, there was multiple as, as you know, yeah. um, is that they would always look at the good side of things. Yeah. And cause you, you, you're faced with an obstacle and chances are you have to go through that obstacle regardless. Yep. So you can, you know, you can take on the, I'm sad, I'm pouty face, mm -hmm. or you can put on the, all right, we have an obstacle. Let's do this. Clap the hands high five and let's go, um, you know, head first. So that's kind of like the biggest thing is like, it doesn't matter. We have these, we have a choice in life and, and uh, these obstacles, especially in the business world, military, whatever it is, um, is 
you choose what kind of attitude you're going to have and having a positive attitude has always worked for me. Now, that's not to say that happens all the time, yeah. but I would say that I'm probably like 95%, 98%. Like I'm, I really do. I'm like, Hey, we got to do this. There's no need to worry because what's going to happen is going to happen. And you know what you need to do to accomplish that mission. That's it. Yeah. It's, it's really quite simple. Yeah. How much, how much of that experience and in, in the things that you've taken from other people and you kind of help and, and shape and mold you as a leader and who you are. Um, do you take into building your company inside of contingent group? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, contingent groups, uh, is, is a beast in itself and for what we do, there's so many services. Um, yes, I, I do attempt to that. And one thing I was, actually just had a phone call yesterday actually with a good friend of mine we were talking about manage, managing and leading and the difference in that. And uh, I've learned that I need some help in the managing categories, but the leading I'm, pre I'm pretty good at. So I was like, man, that's, that's so true. That's so true. So I always have little calls with guys that are running their own companies just to like help me and try to go back and forth. And um, that was one of the big things that we talked about was uh, the managerial side of things is a lot different than leading. You know, you need someone to manage, like, hey, we got to get this done. And that's not, not really a micromanager, like, hey, let's yeah. do this. Got to, you know, get into the weeds. I'm like, hey, guys, let's do this. Boom, we're, we're, we're rolling. That's yeah. kind of like, that's me. That's my personality. But doesn't mean I just still don't want to work on the managerial side because sometimes that's needed. So, yeah. And, and is there a piece of that where it's like, man, sometimes if you just not, if that's not a strength of yours, I would imagine you find somebody inside of the team that, that is that you can get in, in that right place, move people around to, to uh, make up for some of that. Absolutely. Yes. There's definitely the go getters and the guys that have that right mindset. And that's definitely who I lean on uh, for sure. Like, Hey, are we taking care of this? And then, I mean, it's, it's great. Cause I get to learn from guys, you know, that haven't been in the company as long or don't have enough as much as experience as I do. You're still learning. That's, that's one thing that um, that's another big thing right there. It's always learning. I'm always learning. It doesn't matter if you've, been in the military for a year or been in the security world for six months or whatever it may be, or you're 10 years younger than me, I can still learn from you no matter what. I definitely can. So that's, uh, what do they say? There's, there's no uh, shortage of good ideas, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's a great, uh, that's a great attribute to have, especially, you know, you're talking about championship leadership is, is you don't, you don't have everything figured out. Like no. just the ability, just the willingness to know that like there might be somebody that, that maybe has a little less experience or a little less time under the belt, but they might have different experiences that you can still learn from. Um, you know, insecure leaders, they're not powerful and they want to look like they got it all figured mm -hmm. out. It just they slows don't. everybody down. Right. I mean, there's, yeah. no one's winning there. And that's one of the things that I, I realized is, um, you know, when you're doing this, the, the leadership thing and you're talking, you're working is everyone, everyone that you're working with is a human, unless you got some AI stuff going on or something, yeah, right. but they've got a brain. They have life experiences. Their life experiences are different than your life experiences. And they bring a lot to the table if you let them. Yeah. So I, what I'm always big is like, Hey guys, this is what I'm thinking. Ideas. What do you guys think? Bad, good, no, yes. Like all that stuff, pretty much with every decision that I, decide to make as the CEO is, is bounced off a couple individuals. Uh, because again, life experiences, I mean, that, that is huge in my, in my book. And you know, they can say, ah, oh, well, that, this didn't work over here because of this, or this is a great idea because of this. And that's kind of like where I like to go with that stuff. Yeah. Talk, talk a little bit about, um, what was the transition like for you? Um, coming, you know, I think of it like a special operator, especially, um, uh, operating at a high level and some of the things that you were doing, you know, very similar to like a professional athlete coming out of, coming out of sports. And now mm -hmm. it's like, now what, right? You can't really replace that. Um, how was that transition for you? And, and how did you make that transition into um, what you do now? I cried for a couple of days first. That was the yeah. first step. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was scary. I, I mean, I was, uh, you know, I, I talk about like, hey, you got an obstacle in front of you, but that, that was one of the, my biggest ones is like, hey, what do I do? What mm -hmm. do I do? What do I do? You're like, I'm not, I don't have the military blanket. Over yeah. being a paycheck, coming in the 1st and the 15th, my medical is taken care of, all that, all the perks that come with uh, being in the military. But it's like, hey, you, you've, got, you've got all this experience. What do you want to do? And then a couple of years before I got out, I started a contingent group. But uh, it was, and contingent group is kind of like, I wouldn't say it's like the military. Some of the stuff we do is identical just on the, uh, on the corporate side. 
Sure. So that helped a lot. Uh, I still get to work with a lot of guys that I deployed with. Yeah. I okay. used for certain jobs all the time. So yeah. there's still that camaraderie going on, uh, but, but it's different. You know, it's kind of yeah. on you. Yeah. You know, there's not, there's not really the, when I first started, it was me. You know, there was no team really. Right. It, was, it was me and I, I think I had, uh, my kids were running around and sometimes they'd help me out with stuff. <laughs> yeah, so that, I mean, there was, it was, it was lonely. It was, it was scared, but it, like, you just, you got to do it, right? Yeah. If you want to make something, I really didn't want to work for other people. That was one of my biggest mm -hmm. things. Uh, 20 years of it was enough for me. Yeah. So I, and there's a lot of things I wanted to accomplish and take the risk and just go out there. And I kind of, it's fun for me to do this kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, it was, it was definitely a little scary. And I, and I talked to friends that have, have done it around the same time and they got out and guys that are going through right now. And now I like talk to them like, Hey, do you got this plan? Do you, what do you think about this? Or right. about this? Yeah, okay. Oh, which is good. Um, so, but you know, I would have to say the military could do a little bit better job on yeah, sure. preparing you for getting out. But, but again, you're a big boy or girl and you right. should be out there doing it yourself because yeah. it's your life. They're, they're not there to like protect you forever. Yeah, no one's going to save you. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so you actually started the contingent group before you got out. So you yes. Had to get in motion. Yep. I was in a non-deployable unit. I got my uh, degree during that time and just started contracting for a friend. I'm like, hey, I can make a business out of this. And it just kept growing. And then by the time I got out, it was like, Shh. the snowball effect was going. I'm like, we can do this, 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 okay. this. And just good people were put in my life and in the business's life. And so we're growing, we're continually growing. And I'm, I'm happy as long as, as long as we maintain that quality, because I don't want to get too big. I don't want to, you know, not to throw Walmart under the bus or anything, but like to get so big where the no. quality might kind of go down a little. I don't want that. I, I do not want that. Yeah. Well, what is uh what is the vision for you yeah what what you know i think great leaders have great vision and also just the courage to execute and quickly and make decisions and move and and i know as a, a navy seal that's definitely uh something that you have to do mm -hmm. what, what is the vision for you inside of uh what you're doing currently today uh contingent groups kind of a self kind of a self going it kind of brings its own clients in without me doing too much Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a couple of calls here and there, just the right people. It's more like a, a networking thing. That's how we get business. So, but personally, I'm working on a new motivational site, kind of like what you have. I okay. uh, have a book coming out within the next year. So that's kind of the basis of it. Awesome. And, you know, you're going to throw all the podcasts on there and just kind of motivate people. I just, you know, from Instagram and Facebook, like, hey, thank you for saying this. This meant a lot to me. This helped me through today. Like that inspires the heck out of me. And I never knew... Just if you can change one person's life with a simple little post, I mean, that's beautiful. I mean, yeah. to me, that, that is beautiful. You could just stop yeah. somebody from putting a pistol in their mouth, quite honestly. Yeah, absolutely. So what, yeah, what's, what's, what's driving that for you? What's the name of the book? Like, you know, who do you, um, you want to help through this? We got the agent goal. We know we're still waiting on the publisher. That should hopefully be in the next 60 days. Okay. But, uh, it's going to be within war. So the war yeah. within and then yeah. with war. So it's kind of like a, I love it. Cool. Yeah, no, right. it's it's exciting to write. It's really good. Got a great writer uh, that's helping me out with it. So it's it's exciting. Really exciting. Great. And then uh, uh, through that, will you be doing some some coaching, consulting with uh, with people, or is it just more uh, just putting? I would imagine that's gonna. Again? Yeah, I would imagine that's gonna breed out of that from the book. I would I would say a lot of speaking speaking engagements will come out of that, but we'll see. I'm just kind of taking it one step at a time. Right now, the first step is. Uh, get the website up and running, which we've been working on the last couple of weeks and then um, working on the books just chapter by chapter. And then when it's, you know, the book's out and it's time to, all right, let's kind of put it out there. Then that's what we'll do. So just taking it slow yeah, I love and it. methodical. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, Dan Mulroy? I don't know. Yeah. He was a Navy SEAL as well. I just talked to him, but he's kind of going through a similar, similar uh, transition, like, kind of doing the same thing so oh got you um but that's why what made me think of that i just had that conversation not that long ago um i always love talking about like you know we all have it right these turning points these critical moments decisions mm -hmm. to make and like oftentimes they're ones where had we had we had we veered left instead of right you know we'd be in a completely different place like right but the fact that you didn't you, again you made that decision and, and you are here today is, is there a moment in your in your mind that really sticks out where man things could be way way different than they are but of course uh the first one that kind of comes to mind is probably the switch from the marines to the navy yeah taking that step of faith and uh just believing in myself i just 
I just we'll had talk a about that. Time. Yeah. How, so what was what in it is in that decision? Like, had you to go from from the Marines to the Navy? I assume to become a Navy SEAL. If it doesn't work out, which I'm sure wasn't an option for you, but you know, if it doesn't work out, was there a risk that something doesn't happen? That- yeah, it was uh, back to the crying stage. <laughs> yeah, there, there definitely was risk, and I mean, ever since I was a child, I wanted to be a um, to Navy SEAL, and then I took the the left versus the right to go to the Marines because uh-huh. of a friend uh, that yeah. went for his boot camp down in Paris Island for the Marine Corps uh, for his boot camp. So that kind of made me go. That kind of like swayed me from the SEALs in the beginning. Okay. And then about three years, I was like, this is, this is not for me. I'm not liking this. Uh, I mean, great people. Don't get me wrong. It's a great organization. Sure. Just, just wasn't sitting right. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm done. I'm getting out of the military. I'm going to go back to uh, Ohio where I'm from and, you know, be a cop and get a degree and get married and have yeah. kids and play softball. So, <laughs> right. like, yeah. um, so and then I'm like, I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do my dream that I've always said I'm going to do. And I went to the Navy recruiter. I'm like, Hey, what I need to do. So I started training for it, had to wait until my four years was up and went right over in, in my yeah. mind. I had, uh, I knew I was going to, I was going to do this. Yeah. I was not, a, I was, I mean, there was, you know, there's moments and family and friends are like, are you sure about this? You yeah, know, it's really course, hard. Right. You know, they just, they just plant those seeds of doubt yeah. in yeah. your brain. And, uh, and I was actually just talking with my daughter about this a couple nights ago. I'm like, you have got to, people are going to say, what they're going to say based off their experiences. Yeah. Right. You've got to believe in that heart of yours that you can do it and you can, cause you're made amazingly. And uh, I was just like, no, I, I'm going to, I don't care what anyone says. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. And I'm so glad I did. Yeah. Uh, cause you know, I made it one time through, it was tough. Of course it was, but I knew it was, I did my research. Yeah. I did the right things. Uh, so yeah, that was, that was probably the biggest turning point in my life was making that decision. Um, First, the Marines, the military, of course. Yeah. yeah. I could go to college or whatever. Uh, yeah. But I wanted to, you know, fight for this country. And then the, going over to the Navy, that was a big, 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 big leap of faith for me. Yeah, that's, uh, it's always interesting, right? Because I think it's at those points where people will, you could look at like the cross, the fork in the road and going left is maybe the safe route. That's what, right. what family members, are you sure you want to do this? Like, why are you doing this? Like, don't do this. Go, you know, come play softball, drink beer and get, get a job. Right? Like, <laughs> it's, a great time. Time. <laughs> and it's like, well, I mean, you know, it's, it, but it's not for you. And it, it is hard, especially when you're young, when you're you know, oh, yeah. 21 and like, you don't know a lot different uh, like just to, 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 to just listen to that. And then to be able to, 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 to give that advice to your kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially when you're, you're talking to elders and your parents. Yeah. Um, and parents do not know everything. I'm a parent. <laughs> right. I do not know everything. No, totally. I, don't. I think yeah, I do sometimes, but I, I don't. Uh, and there, there's times that kids are, my, my children are right and I'm wrong. And I'm like, man, okay. That's yeah. not supposed to happen. There's like 20 years between this and I'm supposed to have <laughs> this thing called wisdom. Uh, yeah. So just like, it's the same thing. Like you, it's great to hear their opinions. Yeah. But you can't lean on those voices. A lot of people, I believe, lean on those voices and it sways them from not doing their dream. What's yeah. in that heart and in that brain. I think, I mean, you probably see it all the time. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, and then they're strong, right? I mean, it's, you almost can't blame people for doing that, but that's why it's, that's why it's so good to hear these stories from, from people like yourself at, on the podcast is because you didn't listen to that and you did, you know, so that because there's others that are probably listening to this right now, like you said, that they're in that moment and they're like, yeah. Oh man, yeah, I can't, you know, everybody's telling me to go this way, but that's, I don't want that. I want to go here yeah. and do this. And so yeah. you have to lean on that heart. Cause I mean, I, I thoroughly believe that God put certain things in our brain and our heart that uh, is for you. You know, I, I use this, uh, I talk about this a lot and there's nothing wrong with it. You take a, um, say a mattress store. There's nothing wrong with a mattress store. We sleep on mattresses all the time. It's like pretty much our life. Um, But you know, say you're the father and you own this mattress store and you got a son or daughter coming up like, hey, you're going to take over the mattress store. That's great. But in my mind, that's an easy route. I mean, you might be making great money, but were you born the same way your father was? To right. run this mattress store, yeah. I don't, I don't think so. And maybe you were, maybe, maybe there, maybe there are yeah. cases where that is so exciting. Yeah. Uh, but I just don't believe that's the way it is. And I think that's the easy route in some cases. And I'm not ripping on mattress people, please, guys. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> just an example. <laughs> well, it is a sensitive world nowadays. It is. It is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's so true. I mean, 
and they've been programmed for probably from a very young age, like, mm-hmm. oh, I built this for you. This, yep. and now there's just this, this weight of like, oh, I got to do this, but I don't yep. like it. And a lot of people do. So what, was there anything else that, that popped to your head when I asked that question? I know you said there was a, uh, maybe a few. Uh, um, I mean, I had the, I got uh, custody of my children before deployments when I was at a development group with the SEALs. Okay. And I was two weeks out and I had a choice to get full custody of my children or not get full custody of my children. Yeah. Now this seems like a, 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 a no brainer, but yeah. for people that are self-consumed and I was in my job, of course. Uh, and very selfish, I would say at that time, yeah. uh, it was like, okay, what do I do? Do I want to continue my dream route here? And I was like, that's, and then in my heart, I did not want to do this. I did not want to say like my career's over. Those kids are important. I did not want to, I mean, honestly, I really didn't. No, no totally. Uh, Cause I was scared. I'm like, take care of three children. One's eight months old. I don't even know how to change my own shorts barely, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, uh, and then I got to do diaper duty. So uh, it was tough. And I, I just decided like, Hey, I'm, I'm there for those kids. It's the right thing to do. And I will, I will figure this out. And that was nothing. I didn't know what I was going to do. My, my deploying dream was over. Uh, you know, fight for the country, which has always been a childhood dream. And I had to say, no more, I'm done. And those kids are priority. And those kids guaranteed probably saved my life and, um, yeah. and got me to start contingent group and get my degree yeah. and spend more time with them and love on them and just have a great relationship with my kids. So, but at the time it's like, Oh my gosh, what's happening right now. This is not supposed to happen. This is not supposed to happen. And that goes back to that obstacle. You have this, yeah. you got two choices. Yeah. Right. And th- don't get me wrong. I was definitely in the feel sorry for me face for, uh, for a little mm-hmm. bit on that one, yeah. but uh, yeah. overcame that and just pushed through. So, and now I it's wonderful. You, yeah. I appreciate you sharing it. I mean, yeah, like you said, a, a total moment like that and you know, life would be completely different. I'm sure with your kids. Um, but at the same time, I can appreciate it. Cause it's, you know, you think of someone like Deb grew U S uh, Navy seal, like in your profession, like the top of the top of the top, it's just like uh, Tiger Woods and Michael Jordan, the top of there. And, and what happens for my, most people is they choose the career over the family because they're so driven by that. Right. What else is, was, comes it with it. It takes a while to get there, like decades. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. it takes a little bit to get there. Yeah. And so it's just, uh, no, it's great to hear that you, you know, yeah, it's a difficult decision, of course, you know, but it shouldn't be, but it was like, and just to be right. with that is awesome. So I appreciate that. Um, yeah, of course. What are, you know, as we start to wrap this up just a little bit, what are uh, one or two things that, you know, people could really just take and, and implement into their life and just for the better and help move them forward today? Um, I guess one that's kind of coming to mind right now is kind of is being proactive. Um, if you have a goal, go for it. Don't wait for somebody to push you to do it. You should have that drive yourself because it's, I mean, at the end of the day, it's your life. So I would definitely be more proactive. Uh, and I wish I was more proactive in certain things. I wish I would have got my degree done sooner, which I had the perfect opportunity on deployments. I decided not to. I decided that uh, rock band and guitar hero were the most important thing, which <laughs> yeah. is just ridiculous, but yeah. totally fun. Yeah. And, uh, so just be proactive in what your dream is. And if, you're, if you think you're at your dream and you've made it, you're wrong. You're not done. I mean, there's so much you can offer. Figure it out. Uh, pray about it. Sleep on it. Whatever, whatever it is you need to do, meditate. Uh, figure it out and keep moving forward. And then the biggest takeaway is, as we, you know, we, we touched uh, on it before is silence those voices. Do not let them impact your decision unless it's from a really good source and they've got all the facts, they understand it. But at the end of the day, that heart is everything. You go with that heart because mm-hmm. you can't beat it. Yeah, totally. No, I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, what are a few ways that we can uh, follow you and what you got going on? I know you said you got a site. Is that, do you have the link for that yet or? Uh, Not yet. I I will definitely push that out. I'd say probably eddie.penny on Instagram is my biggest uh, platform for getting stuff out. Uh, Always getting a little conversation on that. Try to post motivating stuff uh, all around military stuff. Just kind of depends on what I'm feeling that day. So yeah. And there's then, no rhyme to the, the reason. <laughs> and then, yeah. And then you see, you got the book coming out when six months, uh, I'd say probably within the next year, it'll be out next year. So we got, it's got a long process has to go to DOD yeah. to get approved. And it's, gotcha. there's a lot going that is good. I can imagine that's a lot yeah. of tape to get through on that. Uh, but looking forward to that. So, um, I appreciate you just coming on and giving me some time today and the listeners some time and, and for everything that you, uh, have done. Absolutely. I appreciate you inviting me on. Thank you.
Absolutely. Have a great day. You too, buddy.